What makes a locomotive or a unit from a certain place? Is it where they were built or where they operated? Or in the case of preserved locomotives, does their new home make them from there? I posed this question to my followers on Twitter and the answer more or less boiled down to it depending on where the locomotive or unit spent the most of her life. Australia took great pride in running Australian locomotives, both constructed and ran in Oz. It is therefore interesting to note that the Victorian Railway's Queen of the Rails, as they are seen by so many, were products of the North British Locomotive Company of Glasgow, Scotland. Scott or not, the Victorian Railway's R-Class. The Victorian Railways, or VR, was one of the mostly broad gauge railway operators in the southeast of Australia, the state of Victoria. Come the 1950s, the company was in dire need of new express passenger power. Their class A2, or is it A squared, excellent locomotives in their own right, were getting quite long in the tooth. Initially, the S class 462, or Pacific locomotives, were drawn up to replace the A2s as early as 1918, but when the S's were finally pushed into traffic in 1928, they were found to be too heavy, and in the end only four were ever built. Later in life, the S-Class would be streamlined to hold the Spirit of Progress express train. In the decade between first drawings and introduction, the S-Class actually took inspiration from Gresley's A1 Pacifics, for the engine was a three-cylindered machine driven by Gresley Motion. Due to the Second World War, traffic had greatly increased along the VR network, and in order to relieve the A2s from frontline passenger work, the VR design team once again turned to their old Pacific design. With added mod comms such as a mechanical stoker which brings coal from the tender to the firehole door and jets the mineral into the firebox at the turn of a tap, the new locomotive required an extra carrying axle under the cab to ensure the engine didn't exceed an axle load of 20 tons. In order for the new class of 464 or Hudson locomotives to be built, the VR had to break a tradition of building locos in-house, awarding the contract of 70 locomotives to North British in 1949. What North British turned out after numerous delays in 1951 was a class of locomotive which looked like the best of global steam design, as well as with the smoke deflectors, culminated into a pleasantly proportioned beast. That is not to say North British hit it out of the park immediately though, as manufacturing defects required the locos to head straight for the VR works, Defect only exacerbated by the journey from Scotland to Australia having taken enough time for corrosion to set in. All these delays meant that the final Hudson couldn't enter traffic until 1953. However, by this time, a new class of locomotive had already hit the VR's network. The General Motors built diesels had by this point already proven their worth on Australian railways, and despite having a higher operational cost than the contemporary steam locomotives, they could achieve a far greater mileage between general repairs. Their appearance on the VR network ousted the R-Class from the high-speed expresses for which they were built, the earliest examples to be withdrawn never getting a chance to truly prove their worth, as the earliest withdrawn R, R716, only had a working life of four years. Other than a trio of R's being briefly converted to oil burners and the wheat trains out of Ballarat, the R's could have been nothing but wasted potential. But when scrapping of the R's commenced in 1960, they could still find employment on regular service trains. Seven years later this would all end, and the only traffic for which the R's were scheduled were occasional enthusiast specials. But by the early 1970s the reputation of the R's on these specials had overtaken their reputation as regular express locomotives and seven members of the class entered preservation. Of these, the most active machines are 707, 711... <laughs> ah, come on, we're almost there! <laughs> of these, the most active machines were R707, R711, R766, and perhaps the most famous of all, R761, running rail tours and specials under Steam Rail Victoria. This group also owns R711 and the cosmetically restored R700. The irony is that a VR locomotive, which was positively received by crews and enthusiasts, is almost never remembered for their regular revenue earning service for the VR. Although that is, of course, but the other side of the coin of locomotives that are forever in store due to the feats they achieved during their service life. I hope you enjoyed my first ever look at anything Australian, because I certainly did. 
I'm going to be honest here and admit that I was a bit surprised that this class of locomotive I had constantly heard whispers about only really achieved stardom in their preservation era, like a down under Duke of Gloucester. This was another of the requested episodes, and the next episode should be the New York Central J3A, which was not a suggested episode, but I just want to point out that I do not dislike American Steam. What do you think? Would this locomotive count as a Scot or not? They were built in Glasgow, yes, but they've achieved all their feats in Australia. I don't know, what do you think? I certainly hope I can see you all in the next video. Cheerio!